I really do believe that any list where he's not in your top 10, I don't, I just can't. You know, and a lot of people don't. And that's fucked up, man. Fuck those people. Fucked up. Yo, this is the Do It Yourself Music Appreciation Podcast. Um, what you're about to hear is actually a bonus episode uh, where we talk about Busta Rhymes' album, Anarchy. Thought it'd be a nice piggyback from uh, from last episode, the When Disaster Strikes episode from Busta Rhymes. Um, but uh, because it was from our second attempt at doing this, the audio is a little bit rough, a little bit choppy, but I uh, hope you guys enjoy the content. What is, uh, you've, you've thought of one. Let's hear yours. I have not. I've been struggling. <laughs> Honestly, because Dion and I's, in my opinion, the best, the best title we've come up with doesn't really exactly, uh, no, like, it doesn't, it doesn't fit this. Cause we're not like, may, Gary, so the, our, so the idea for me and Ben's, uh, our podcast would be, <laughs> 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 which is a great podcast, but it's right. like, that's for like, like yeah, that'll so be topic need, that me and argue, me and Ben just argue about. Like that's right. like that, that's need, not the place for this. You need you need Sergi for that. You need Alex for that. Perhaps you know, these are these are right. important characters for for what you think is wrong. <laughs> Your opinion is Sergi, wrong. Sergi's, wrong. Yeah. Sergi's, Sergi's right up there. I see a, I see a fucking plant. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you guys, I see, I see them every day at seven for the uh, for the clap. With a little string. We we're thinking about doing it. <laughs> we Thank are you. close enough. We actually could. Yeah. Fuck that. Why do that when we got Bluetooth? <laughs> right. So, I, I don't know. We got this. Uh, you know, something like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. So un- how about, untitled uh, NBA podcast for now. How about, uh, how about music appreciation? What about do it yourself, man? <laughs> do it yourself music. <laughs> do it yourself. <laughs> music review. <laughs> Uh, do it yourself man. music reviews. All right. Like, yeah, because you can't trust other, <laughs> when you can't yourself, trust man. people to do reviews for you. You got to do it yourself, man. <laughs> do it yourself music reviews. The yeah, well, I am. <laughs> All right. Well, at any rate, uh, <laughs> something to ponder. But uh, last week, man, I listened to the whole thing, and obviously, like, I, I've you know. I've done some public speaking in recent years of my life. And I always like afterward, I always go, Oh man, I wish I said that. Or I wish I said that, or I wish I said that, but you know, so listening back, I'm like, Oh man, I wish I talked about this. I I meant to talk about this with Keith, but you're always going to have that. You're always going to have that. For the most part, I think considering how uh, unprepared we were to, or unexperienced, inexperienced, uh, I thought it sounded pretty damn good. And we, it was exactly what we were, what I was hoping we could go for. So well, cool. it's my, you know, it's talking with uh, some of our favorite people who we don't get to see very often. That's fucking cool. About yeah. a, share, a shared, a shared, you know, loved interest. So it was, uh, right. it was cool. Actually, you know what? You just brought something up that I didn't, I didn't think of until right now. If you want, we could, I mean, do whatever the fuck we want with this, like the answer of formatting. But if you want, we can start each each week with like five minutes of like last thoughts from the previous week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit that we forgot to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Okay. I like that. Because fuck yeah, it. Because this... what else we got to do? Like, no, no, no. We're you know gonna be. Uh, we're we're gonna be. There's so much left unsaid with every. If we're because of. All right. Let me start. Let me start this way. Right. If we are limiting the scope to one album as the topic, that's a smart and elegant way. Yeah who have a weekly conversation because there's right. always something left unsaid and it's, it locks us in at least in part, it locks in the focus to a period in time. Yes. And this brought, yo, the hour, this week's album brought me back. And it always does, by the way, this is, you know, last week we, we chose something that neither of us, uh, that none of us had uh, a ton of experience listening uh-huh. to this one. I don't know about you guys, but it has to be in the hundreds for me in terms of listening. Like, yeah. Probably. When I find something I love, I I listen to it obsessively for my whole life, mm. uh, and this is one of those man. So uh, we're talking about 
the album Anarchy by Busta Rhymes. And I was 20 years old, two months shy of being 20 years old. Fuck Came out man. June 2000. I, that makes me feel so old. I know, I know. <laughs> this, I remember the shit out of June 2000. The, because, you know, this was like a, a, a bit of an anchor, right? Like, I could recall everything around this, right? I remember riding the bus and seeing uh, on one of the walls of uh, in my neighborhood, spray-painted, anarchy coming, whatever. Yo. So cool. I, I, were you in Morrow yet, Gary? No. This was Not my, yet, no. Uh, this, was my, my last, uh, this was ninth grade. And you went to of... Brooklyn Tech? Yeah. So yeah. you were in Brooklyn Tech. This was ninth grade. Wow. Actually, this album... I'll tell you right now, this album, I believe, would have come out, um, oh, my bad, sorry. This album would have come out about the month that we graduated, uh, um, that, that we um, ended freshman year of high school. So it would have been Gary's like last few days probably at Brooklyn Tech. <laughs> Which I spent at Murrow hanging out with you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember that. Yo, so like, let me take you through what I remember of before this album, right? So this is the first Busta Rhymes album that, I remember the buildup, right? So when ELE dropped, the one before this, I don't know. I mean, my brain was still developing. You know, we were in junior high school, and I just remember that it came out. I didn't know that he was working on it. I remember I loved When Disaster Strikes and and uh, The Coming. You know, I wasn't overly familiar yet, but I remember when ELE dropped, it was like, Everyone in the schoolyard talked about it, mm-hmm. particularly we as a, a crew talked about it a lot. I remember <laughs> Tear the Roof Off was uh, a track we talked about a lot, and it was an amazing, probably, uh, I go back and forth if that one, if ELE is my favorite Buster Rhymes album ever, but then, you know, freshman year, uh, thank you for reminding me that it was freshman year, but I remember the announcement, Anarchy coming out, and you know, if you pay attention to Busta Rhymes albums, uh, if you pay attention, the first few, he's talking about the end of the world. You know what yep. I mean? He's yep. talking about the impending doom of, of the apocalypse. Like, throughout, you know, uh, I remember ELE, he kept saying, there's only one year left. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It used to scare there's me a little. There's only one year left. <laughs> <laughs> so Harmonize that shit, yeah. Anarchy was like, like the aftermath, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. That's what I looked at it as. as. I, I remember when I Googled this last week, or when we decided to talk about it, um, they said it's the first album that didn't follow. Some, some article said that, it, or review said it was the first album that didn't follow that trend of talking about the apocalypse. But for me, it's the end. It's like the final chapter. And it's like, you know, his, his songs never really reflect the story of the apocalypse, ex- except for when he starts talking about it. But uh, yeah, exactly. this is like the aftermath you know, um, of the apocalypse. And so I remember anticipating it and, uh, being, and this is my honest opinion, somewhat disappointed when I first, yeah. when I first listened to it, I was like, man, this missed the mark. Uh, this isn't ELE. This isn't when disaster strikes. It's good, but it's not that good. And that was my first opinion of it for a while. I'll be honest. And I think it was Gary who was always kind of playing it in the background or he, he would make these like Busta mixes. And I'd mm-hmm. be like, I don't know that one. What's that from? He's like, Anarchy, bro. You know what I mean? And that, oh, like, and that's what started. Yep. That's right, man. <laughs> and like, and I, you know, so that's what kicked me in the ass, you know, 10, 10 years ago to really dive deep into this album and, and, and fuck, man. <laughs> so fucking good it's great Uh, yo buster rhymes has this ability and this is i'd say this is a quality in all of my favorite mcs they all have this ability to when you're listening to them they take you someplace else you're not just listening to some dude rap right he i am i am transported to another dimension and and i'm in buster rhymes's world you know and just like Keith, know, just just like Keith last week. Yep, for sure. They both have Same that exactly. power. But mm-hmm. Buster Rhymes, when Buster Rhymes in this first in Salute the Gods, the first out, the first track, he goes, "I feel so fucking good." Mm-hmm. And when he says that, "I feel so fucking good," it like just his statements and the way, 
he just ah, he just like cracks you in the head with whatever mm-hmm. he's feeling and you're like yes i feel good too buster <laughs> yes, Ryan. yes fuck you too <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and then he goes, I feel so imperial. I don't even know what it means to feel imperial. And I'm like, I feel imperial too, man. I've been feeling imperial after that for years. So it had to mean something. I don't know what it meant. <laughs> oh, shit, man. So powerful. No, you're, you're, you're right. And, and not, obviously not just like the, the statements and the words or whatever, but just that, that song. I mean, forget, the, forget the intros. Obviously, Bus Rhymes intros and outros are their own fucking thing. I mean, great. Yep. That, that, those, all of them should be released as their own album, in my opinion, <laughs> which would be easy to do at this point. But, so forgetting right. that, like the, true, like the true intro to the album in terms of songs is Salute to God. And again, like, forget about him saying, I feel so fucking good. Just that beat and that, that, like, you know, that, that verse, it, like, it gets you right in. It punches you right in. It's like, yo, this shit's about you're about to get hyped for like an hour, hour and ten minutes or whatever, and mm-hmm. it, here's here's the intro, you know. Mm-hmm. And compar- comparatively to Cool Keith's, we were talking briefly about how he would just say the word. Yeah, <laughs> he would just say what the chorus was, you know, like mm-hmm. superhero. That's it, you know, <laughs> like over and over again. Busta's <laughs> like he's just like that's him singing out of key. Ready for yeah. Busta Rhymes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, yo, like, who would have thought about that? Like, and it's so powerful that, yo, the, I will say the first half of this album is so, like, just smacks you in the face with energy, with, mm-hmm. with, you know, like, uh, I can't even put it into words. What, what Busta, the power it's just energy. It's just just pure energy, you know. <laughs> and, and ability to just transport that energy into your brain, and you know what I mean. And like, mm-hmm. I don't know of another rapper who has that power, quite frankly, in the way he not, does. Not like him. I, I you know, not there like are, there aren't many human beings that have this, uh, that are imbued with this, uh, with this ability, right? With this, uh, with this power that he that he has, right? And this is why. I don't know. To me, this album, I did feel that too, Benny, when I like, you know, I listened to, I turned it on. I'm like so psyched because, you know, it's been a couple of, it's been a little while since the last one. When did ELE come out? That was the, that was the one before. Eighth grade. Yeah. So, 90, so 90, yeah I think 90, it was 98, 99. Yeah. yeah. And, and that was such a, that was an amazing oh. piece of work. And just, you know, was, was dying to hear this, especially since like, okay. you know, we had just, for us, we just started going to high school. Like life has changed mm-hmm. for us. Like I want to, I want something awesome and a little bit familiar. And then December ninety eight, December ninety eight, right? Okay. Yeah, so, so it was actually freshman year of uh, uh yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, the eighth, eighth grade, exactly, eighth exactly. grade, yeah. We we're jamming to it for a while before this came out, and this came out, and it was it was different. Uh, and you know, the thing about Busta Rhymes that I think is persistent uh, is that under like you could hear a, he changes, right? He's got different. Uh, I think he's got different. Um, modes uh, eras of of dragon right he evolves right it's yeah like a, gary like you cool. mentioned that before just in conversation the, uh, you're, you're elaborate a little bit on that because that you're you're like theory and you're like notion about the, this like, is the my pet theory of, of, of trying to oh this is just my way to try to understand buster Rhymes. Yeah. because uh, a little it's bit the way we should all understand buster Rhymes. <laughs> so you know in the beginning uh when he was in leaders of the new school and when he was putting out music it, it sounded a lot different uh than what his current work sounds like or what anarchy sounds like right it's just he was like uh he was like baby dragon you know he was like he was he was you know, it was it was him it's recognizably Busta Rhymes and when you listen to a song fast forward how many years and you listen to one of his you know current songs like you know recent songs that he released you still see it, it sounds totally different but it's Busta Rhymes you know and I could hear Busta Rhymes in a different I could hear Busta Rhymes in Cantonese and sped up to be like Alvin and the Chipmunks or something. And I would still recognize immediately that's Busta Rhymes because he, he carries like, he carries his voice, carries that, that power, you know, it like, like nobody else. It's just very recognizable. I think. Agreed. Yeah, man. Agreed. yeah. No one has his cadence. No one has any of that. Like he, I'm not, I, and I've never said he's the greatest. I have him in my personal top five at the very least top 10. But I've never said he's the greatest, but I will say that, yeah, that he, I mean, he's so fucking unique. Like, no, no one, it's like, it's like you just, like you both just said, like, no one is like him. You can't, you can't compare. Dude, and people I, still have respect for him, which is great. He's easily in my top five. Easy. Yeah. There's, that's not even a question, right? There's like no, there's no debate there. Yeah, and, and, and I, and I really do believe that any list where he's not in your top 10, 
I don't, I just can't. You know, and a lot of people don't, and that's fucked up, man. <laughs> Fuck those people. Fucked up. <laughs> Fuck that. You know, the thing is about with this album, when, when I, I don't know how we chose this album specifically, was it you, Dion, who, who uh, recommended it? It was, it, yeah, but it was from uh, I had a loose conversation with Ben a, couple, yeah. a few weeks ago. It was just one of like, the exam, like, sample albums that, like, you know, are important to us, but don't get right. as much love. Like, exactly right, right. what we've been trying to do. And I was right. like, you know what? Like, we talked about it. Why don't we just fucking talk about it? <laughs> this is a nuance. I knew it had to be a nuanced conversation that we were going to have. We we're going to talk about anarchy. That's different than talking about, you know, the coming or when disaster strikes or even the mixtape that he released with Q-Tip, the, those mixtapes. Oh, so you know, those are good, so man. Incredible, right? But God, this, God. this is a nuanced conversation because there are things on here that are hints of what his voice and his style is going to be you know 20 years later right you can totally. start to see that right this you, was his, his voice dropped right he's, he's no longer you know, no there's no baby dragon in here <laughs> i don't Yo, know you probably hate to hear that but you know it, it's it's different here you know when, when you hear a song like live it up you know mm -hmm. when he's talking about uh, when, when his his voice is lower right oh, the, let's get high let's is, get drunk yeah. From that. yeah yeah yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, subject matter aside, like that—that that is a that is a different kind of sound, and that yeah. is uh, I feel I felt like it was an experiment that he decided to double down on in future years, and that's how his you know that that's part of his evolution. Yeah. To to piggyback off of a, a point that, you, that I think Ben had earlier, um, enjoy the ride. Like, oh no, so how, how we're saying like how was unique and everything. That is true. However, in listening to Enjoy the Ride, God, uh, uh, Gary, I don't know if you're as much a fan of Danny Brown. Uh, ben, I know you know you know you know a little bit of Danny Brown. I heard a yeah. lot of Danny Brown in Enjoy the Ride. Hmm. I don't know if I don't know if you again, Gary. I know you. I know you're not. I'm not familiar with it. I don't know shit about I, I didn't put it to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put it together, but I could see that now. But Dan, Danny in Brown the phrasing. is phrasing. What in like the the phrasing, right? It's not just the phrasing. It's the it's the flow too. It's like in that specific song, he's got he's got that like. I, I it's funny. It's actually a flow that you hear a lot now. Or or sort of recent, like this is, but this is like back when it was good. It's like mm -hmm. I got it's it's like da 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 da, I got da 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 da, like that like yeah. that kind of like you know what I mean? Danny he Brown, he, like he that is what that kind of flow. Yo, and you nailed it right there, Dion. And a, and just like what Gary was saying, he, every album Busta evolves and mm -hmm. changes, and this was, um, he he was fucking with different flows on this album and i'd say yeah it, it yes. was almost while there's definitely like I, in my opinion the dragon in buster rhymes is perfectly uh like the, like all of the coming uh you know just like the <laughs> like i'm sorry mm -hmm. I, don't, I mean i don't mean that as an insult but just a no. you know what i mean like bust you in the face wild shit he started getting a little more chilled out on certain tracks the dragon's there Salute the gods. Uh, Basically, any track that ends in exclamation points. There's three of them. <laughs> <laughs> yo, but well, yo. yo, put it down for y'all. Like mm -hmm. that, that, that track. Anyway, he just his flows started to vary on this one, right? And I think that mm -hmm. might be what it was. Uh, that I was like, ah, I don't know. You know what I mean? I was expecting ELE, you know, the sequel, I and, I, and I didn't yeah. get it. Because what but, we're hearing is like, you know, this is a dragon that did not just, you know, it, it, it didn't just show up to the scene, right? There's a dragon that just burned down the city. Right. I mean, eight, eight like mad a, people. <laughs> eight, eight, uh, eight the fat. Fucking dragon. Oh, that's a good point. Not Maybe like a victory lap. Out, you know, smoke yeah. coming out of his snout, curled up, pile of treasure. This is, this is, the different, this is a different kind of, uh, of animal. <laughs> One thing. Very well put, Gary. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what, what, one thing that I, on first listen, I remember being a fucking freshman in high school, listening to this for the first time. One track stood out to me. That, and it's, and it's, the beat is just, a, it's a loop. It doesn't change the whole song, but Blad Out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Flat Out is one of the best fucking beats in hip hop history. Yo, can't, it's, fight me. Fight me. I, yo, <laughs> what is it? Maybe an eight second loop? Bling, ding, ding. Yeah. Ding, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Bling, ding, ding. It's so ba, ba, fucking ba, 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 good. Boom. Who made this beat? Is that is that Swiss? No, who, who, who would have done it? Oh, man. I, I had the producer list the other day. Dilla is all over this album, too. Not all over, but he's got a few beats on here. Hold on. Uh, but Al Scott Scores. Scott Storch. Scott Storch. Yeah. He's one of those, if you know, you know, but 
Scott Storch is on some shit, man. Roots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he produced a lot of, you know, some Roots albums. Uh, fucking Method Man. He has, he has, he's on that, um, what's that Method Man album? The last Which appearance one? of ODB. Uh, shit. Um, uh, oh, oh, zero, uh, t- 420 the, the day after. Oh, that's uh, it. That's what it's yeah, called. Yeah. 421 I, the day after. Yeah, yeah, 421, 421, 421. Good album. Really good. Underrated. I think he also did some Christina Aguilera too, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I fuck with Christina, man. That's great. Man. I, I, fuck with, I fuck with Christina. I think she, she has a hit, I think, from, from years ago that's called FUSS, but it's like a, a what's an acronym, I guess, so it's F-U-S-S, and the, the rumor is that it's, it's supposed to stand for Fuck You, Scott Storch, because he, he apparently like fucked her over <laughs> for, oh, for some people, something like that. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm, I'm consulting my notes. But that, that was one of the things that Blood Out was one of the one of the best beats, man. Dude. Um, so when this this I remember being like, I've never heard anything like this, and that it's not like they were. It was a groundbreaking method. They just took a loop, added a bass line underneath the synth bass yeah. line. But fuck, man, it just gets you in the fucking neck. You we'll know what I mean? If, if, yeah, I see if exactly. it does right there. Anything. Oh shit, Benny, uh, that's a great way to put it. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah, that. So on first listen, that was like, oh shit. And then I love because it's just this this loop. Gary pointed this out to me, right? Mm-hmm. I remember having this talk with you, Gary. At the end of it, it's like I the don't... same thing over and over. He just goes, "Enough of that." <laughs> or what does he say? "Enough of that," and it just turns <laughs> off. Uh, yo, Busta has this. I thought about it on the first track. It came to my mind and I realized, so he's not one of those guys where you go, yo, did you hear that line? He compared this to this and it's a triple entendre. And, you know, he's not that guy. You're not going to be like, yo, that metaphor was genius. You know what I mean? But he, the way he talks just paints a picture. Yo, in the first track, Dion, cut this out real quick. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No for that. No, you're good. No, no, <laughs> Never the, yeah, never the. <laughs> so in the first in the first track he just goes in a black tinted out government truck yeah 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 <laughs> and i'm like i know exactly what he's talking about like <laughs> like i know exactly what he's fucking talking about and it and it's painted in my head forever a black tinted out government truck and you almost get the feeling that he like he purposely said the word government with extra hump to, to make you know it's like yo this is, I, i'm talking about this specific truck a i feel like truck. <laughs> I, I feel it's like something you could steal in gta 4 you know what i yeah. mean like, <laughs> yeah i know the one right immediately yep. I, I think that's part, like i guess he's an amazing storyteller right he includes stories as part of his uh yeah, part of his albums right and like i yeah. guess there's a theme to his albums right anarchy right uh when disaster strikes eoe etc but like there are little stories that he tells within the songs that are just, they put you someplace, you know, like when we were talking about live it up. Right. Uh, so, you know, now I live in the, in the woods somewhere, but I used to live in Brooklyn, you know, and I used to drive on the belt parkway and I used to drive on all those highways that he mentions when he's just, you know, yeah. talking over yep. the track. And, you know, I, I take that highway to go to school or see my grandma or something, you know, but, you know, he's, you know, little did I know before hearing that track that, uh, you know, there's this fabulous villain driving around smoking blunts and drinking <laughs> at three in the morning, speeding in his Cadillac or whatever beautiful big car he's driving. Like, that's a crazy thing, man. That's, that, that, that puts me back in the city every time that I, that I hear it. Uh, it's it's a crazy song, and he's telling a story with not so many words. You know, he's just like he's tell he's talking about what he's doing in his car, but it puts you right there. Right there. Yeah, you know, that that's actually something interesting. It's, a, it's something about Busta and other artists like that, like other sort of '90s New York fucking artists. And that's something that me or Ben can't speak to because we still live in the city. But for someone like you, I bet like a big part of it is just like the nostalgia, like listening to the '90s and 2000s Busta. Just it's if anything but it just brings you back to fucking home. Like he's I'm look I'm looking at the lyrics for for uh, for Live It Up right now. You're right. He said Bell Parkway, Grand Central, LIE, Cross Island, like all these. Like you know, just if you haven't lived in the city for a while, just even those lines alone, and then you know, let alone with him like his accent, and his fucking like brolic nature and everything. Like yeah. I can imagine. It's probably That's very right. nostalgic right. for you. And as, like for you also, man, I mean, you like driving, right? Like Dion, sure. I know, was a man who likes driving. We used to, you know, drag race and play Bennett Field, right? Yeah, lo- love to have, love to have, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, as somebody like when you're driving to that song, it puts you in a place too. It's a good driving song. Yeah. Yeah. And he also has the ability to paint a picture for people who haven't experienced things on this. I think it's this album to correct me if I'm wrong, where he goes like where he's talking about, this is a song for people from this type of area where they got a gun store, a liquor store and a yeah, church yeah. <laughs> all on the same block. <laughs> right I, I didn't live in a place like that right i'm from queens but i mean i i've driven through places like that but I, I, it's not it, that song's not for me i can appreciate that song right but that song wasn't dedicated to me and i could respect sure. at what that picture is vivid you know what i mean like they ship out gun saw gun saw look at saw gun saw <laughs> yeah <laughs> what the fuck you taking me <laughs> you know exactly what you mean exactly yeah. what you're talking about yeah. mm-hmm. for sure man for sure Now, I would say, after all these years, this album ranks number four in all of, like, for it, like in my hierarchy of Buster Rhymes albums. Uh, I still hold, uh, I'd say, When Disaster Strikes is, in my opinion, his masterpiece. I think so, yeah, yeah, in my opinion. ELE right behind it. Yep. Then The Coming, just for... There was nothing like The Coming before The Coming oh. came out. Yeah. And I'm sorry to digress away from this album for a minute. We're, we're, we're going to talk about it. I think it's context, Benny. It's, it's context. Dude. Yeah. Can I tell you my first memory of that era? So oh, it's so good. So, <laughs> I've told you both this story before. So the only understanding of Buster Ryan, what was that? Was that me or you? That was, that was me. That was Facebook. Okay. Uh, the only understanding of Busta Rhymes I ever had before that was Scenario, right? So as a kid, I only listened to what my brother listened to before junior high school. It's just whatever my brother was into. And my brother was into Tribe. And I heard Scenario. He had the single, the cassette single. Mm-hmm. And he, we would play it in the car. And there's only one curse. It's at the end of the of the song when Buster Ryan goes like take that motherfucker yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. so he would always lower right we were in the car with my mom he'd lower the volume right at that point and say something <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't, didn't hear the curses anyway <laughs> that incredible talk for a second can we talk can we talk about that you know let's I'm sorry let's just let's just let's just add a, a, a comma here for a second go, go. whatever yeah this is another thing that is difficult for me to accept in my idolization of Buster Rhymes, because I do idolize the guy. I do. I idolize the music that he makes. I, I, I think that I apply all kinds of ideals to him. I know that the next thing that he'll release, if it's from the heart, I'm going to love it. Right. I know that uh, without hearing it. But one of the things that's changed, especially in this era, anarchy, he is very aggressive with, oh, his, yeah. with his language, man. He, uh, he became like, violent in he, his lyrics. Exactly. Like, you know, the, what I think is uh, he's a complex person, just like anybody else. And this is a uh, part of his character or, or uh, the character that he puts into his music anyway, that comes out. That's very, uh, I guess, uh, neg- I, I guess it, it, it's dehumanizing to women, gay people, you know, like what, uh, whatever, like you got it, like listening to it in 2020, I got to think about that. Right. When I'm listening to it in the car with, with my wife or something, right. Like, I, like here's music that I love, but here's a part of it that I'm like, ah, I kind of turn the want to turn the volume down when he's talking about you know bagging bitches, taking them to tellies, you know, bouncing on that. It's like, it's it's a, uh, I know. call it I call it ignorant rap, and I don't mean that he's an ignorant person, but the shit that they're talking about is, um, it it hit it, it like resonates with the child in me. I'm like ah yeah fuck yeah, yeah. Right. but like now I'm like funny silly all right like in these times where we kind of wake up to misogyny a little those things make me a little uncomfortable when I listen to them uh, maybe ignorance not the right word but like it was a time where that was that was what rappers rapped about yeah right. Right. And, I, and, that's, and that's the sole reason why I, I'm not even like 100% not going to come down on Buster or any rapper from, from that era. For, Bro, we uh, listen to you know. Necro. Yeah, exactly. We still listen. I mean, come on. And listen, we fucking I'm, reviewed an album last week called Dr. Octogynecologist Part 2. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> we're still right. part of the problem, but it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> you know? That's right. That's um, right. But I, I also think, and, and this goes to another, like, another thing that we keep talking about with Buster, which is 
it's like you said, Gary, it's part of the positive, but also part of the negative. And part of what makes him so relevant, so good, you know, even now as like a 50 year old is that he knows how to adapt to the times. And sure. uh, fortunately, some of the, some of that negative, uh, like, you know, some of that includes uh, pressure from, you know, the record companies and fans and like all, all these people. So around 2000, it would make sense that, yeah, his, his content would change a little bit to try to keep up. Because remember at that point, New York, rap, rap in New York was already starting to be like, uh, at this point, New York rap is like fucking dead, right? But like 98, 99 was about, yeah. about the end of it. So like, I feel like rappers, like New York rappers in like the late 90s, early 2000s probably felt that they had to go like the extra mile to do some extra shit that like, you know, to sort of keep it relevant and keep them. Totally. You know what I mean? It was following in the trend of where lyrics were going. Yeah. And one thing I'll say in Busta Rhymes is I praise him. If you've ever watched, he did a Sway in the morning interview, which is mm. Sway gives him the fucking most excellent intro ever. Sway just, is a great interviewer. Builds him up so hard that Buster's like, yo, I'm going to cry. I think he said something. <laughs> Whatever. A- anytime a woman spoke to him during that thing, whether it be Heather B, the co-host, mm-hmm. or someone mm-hmm. calling in, he'd be like, thanks, queen. You know, he'd mm-hmm. call everyone queen. I'm like, yo, that is a gentleman, right? Like, he is a man. He is a wise, evolved gentleman. Well, and it, you know what I mean? It's funny because, yeah, no, like, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good, and that, that's sure. definitely something of like a uh, like oh like old older black men you would find like you know sort of like ha- like would have that much more outward respect towards women and people like that than like the like younger people, and that's just that's the same any like any time like you you're never gonna find Royce or Buster or fucking Diddy or anyone like that talking to any kind of disrespect because these are grown ass men now like right. they're not fucking kids running around anymore like leave that totally. shit for little Zan and you know, all them, like, they could, they could be disrespectful and have their fucking face tattoos and shit like that. But people like Busta, yeah, like, I mean, Busta, basically, let's put it this way, especially in this day and age, if Busta doesn't come correct <laughs> to, to, to women and, and gays, he's going to get roasted and he's going to get yeah. canceled. So, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, but I, I think I, it's I, more that, than just conscious of where the that, social thing is going. Yeah. I think it's, it's at its core. It's respect. That's what I was going to say. That was what I was going to end on is that, that right. being said, like, he, like, you could tell, like, he's genuine. I, I told you, my, my sister was in a Rod Digger video mm. back in the day, and that's why mm. I, I always knew I had respect for Buster because he wasn't even in the video. I think he just showed up just to say what's up. But he did that thing that, like, you know, he, he said what's up to every single extra, every crew member. Like, my sister shook his hand, and he's like, yo, and like, this, this dude is true. This is back in, like, what, the late 90s, probably? Um, so like he always, you can, you can tell he's always that like genuine kind of person and it just, it's, it's great that now, you know, now he's older and everything like that, he could actually you know, sort of outwardly say that, but, or, or act that way. But in late, or early 2000s, I, I can't, not, not, not that I think you were knocking him, Gary, but I'm just yeah. saying like, I can't, I understand. I got, I'm the same way, but it's like, Dude, it is what it is. Of course. Mm-hmm. And, and like on that note, right. I'm bringing it back to what I. This is a great story. Sorry, sorry. Benny. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I oh, really yeah. want to. I want to say this. So yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I knew scenario backwards and forwards. I fucking love that song, but I was not a hip hop head at the time. You know what I mean? I just you know my my brother, thank God, had a very eclectic taste in music, which is me right now, right? I don't only listen to hip hop. I listen to fucking a ton of shit, mm-hmm. jazz, rock, certain you know good songwriters from the country scene, but. National anthems? No, I don't fuck with national anthems. But real quick, so I love that shit, but that's all I knew of Buster Rhymes. I was not in the scene. I didn't, I wasn't familiar with the other guest spots, which I came to realize he did throughout all of that. I didn't know leaders of the new school or any of their material. And then come, Coming came out in 95 or 96, Dave? 95, I think. Pretty sure 95. And then, and then when the Dash yeah. track was 97, fifth grade. ALE was 98, 99. Yeah, 98, so it's, 90, it's, 99. It's the end of fifth grade, I believe, when the coming dropped, if, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I so. didn't even meet you guys yet. And my mom used to wake me up in the morning by blasting the TV on whatever channel was on the night before, right? So I wake up to the blasting, like she turned it up loud. She didn't want to deal with me waking up. You know what I mean? And it's, it's uh yeah, I've seen that shit. It's rough. It's, <laughs> listen, so the what I wake up to is the music video for Wuha got you all in check. Yeah, you woke up to that shit. And I was like, what <laughs> the fuck? I didn't even know who Buster Rhymes was. I only knew his verse and scenario. Yeah. I'm going, what the fuck is this? Is this a nightmare? 
Like he's just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just like the, the video and the sound. So wild. I was like, so I've wild. never heard anything like this. I was scared, bro. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like I was just dreaming. Like what the fuck is this shit, man? And, and it, that was my intro to Busted Rhymes. Like what the fuck? Because I don't think the world as, as a whole heard anything like that when no. um, when he came out like it at was, least not mainstream at least there was nothing mainstream well that. i mean name an album even in the underground that sounded like that that's true that's true that I, really I, I always bring it back to, to, to um what's his name to um my god uh cool keith is, is, is the only one i can think of that's got that but even he didn't have it was like it was a different weird kind of weirdness. Yo, yeah he was weird momentum he was out thing. the momentum of the thing that right. the uh the way that it, uh, how, how did you how did you put it benny that the fact that it just like attacks you in the neck or something right here yeah oh. totally no, <laughs> yep. nothing did that except nothing. you know and i didn't i wasn't into this at the time i just didn't have the uh, you know knowledge of music the little knowledge of music that i have now but at least now i've had a chance to go back and listen to leaders of the new school yep. you know and, and you know it's there that, en- that that energy's that, there man totally for sure. like, Definitely. Energy, Definitely. even if the voice is different even if right. he was with a group of people even if you know other things are different it's yep. it's very much that recognizable energy yep uh, anyway, so I just wanted that's, I love that story. I was it's literally a great scared, story. I know, scared I know that story. It's shitless, a great story. Scared <laughs> shitless the first time I heard, but woke up to I thought I was still dreaming. Uh, anyway, so I'd say you know, when disaster strikes, ELE, the coming this and their first four albums, right? They're like this is not that far behind in my heart to the others in that list, right? Yeah, I think these are, you know, the Stones have this like. The Rolling Stones have this era of their music where it was from Let It Bleed to, uh, Be- not Beggar's Banquet, um, Exile on Main Street, which is just perfection, right? And I think that was Busta's, those, there were four albums that is just like untouchable perfection. Mm-hmm. Just, just his, the highlight of his career. If he never released another album, he will go down in history in the Hall of Fame as one of the greatest to ever do it because of those four releases. Sure. You know, and while Genesis and Back on My Bullshit have, is those, those are the only two albums he released since? No, no, actually, it's, yeah, that's actually more. what I was doing. I was looking at his, his discography. He's got like 10. So he's got The Coming, When It's Acid Strikes, ELE, and Anarchy. Then Genesis, It Ain't Safe No More, ah, the Big Bang, okay. Back in My ah, BS. Okay, okay. Uh, See, Year, I, I, Year of the Dragon. <laughs> that was a good and, album. Uh, that was a good album. That was a very good album. And Return of the Dragon, the mixtape, is phenomenal also. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, so, I, I, admittedly, right, just calling myself out, I am not nearly as familiar with the other stuff. Uh, with the, every album you, you mentioned after this, it's my own, I don't know, I, I just don't bump those albums nearly as much as I bump these. I don't I, either, but what I, what I do play from those albums a lot are, and this, this is where he gets into, like, his next era, are that is like you know the hitmaker era, right? Because Busta Busta definitely about, went through a hitmaker era. It, it um, went to a little more commercial and a little yeah, more trying to went, get yeah. the the radio to 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 like play it on radio. exactly. Yeah. But I love that shit too. Like to, like t- touch it is a fucking great song. Like it's just, like it turns like just a beat like gets you like energy like it's the best like lyrical. Actually, no, it kind of is. The thing is, it's kind of masked by like a sort of party beat. But like he still got that like sort of fast flow. He still got that like that Busta energy, and that's, that's again that bringing it back to to him. Like no matter how commercially gets, no matter what, like he always if you listen to his songs at like, the root of it, he always has that like sort of Busta style that never like like that that never wavers. Like yeah, you might have you, you can even, you can even tell yeah he, he probably sold out a little bit. What what artist didn't uh, that was successful throughout the? the I, know, I, I like but he still maintained his uh, his style. I, I actually enjoyed seeing like high, super high production Busta Rhymes stuff. Right? Same here. Yeah, right. Like, dude, his sense of humor is so good. It comes through in the music videos that he makes, right? And like, yeah, there, there are gems sprinkled throughout those albums. Like, I gotta, I gotta take a deep dive, man. It, you know, I really take a deep do. Dive. It's some of it is doo doo. So, some of, again, in in general, some of it is doo doo in terms of just like you know. It, you know the sort of commercial generic type type sound but not all of it not all of it um okay. and, I, and, and he's and, allowed you know what i mean yeah, it's like course. you know fuck if you make those four, first four albums do whatever the fuck you want man just have fun <laughs> you know and, yeah, exactly there, actually <laughs> is that and, and 
I'm kind of amending a thought that I literally just had. I don't know. But maybe they're not doo-doo. Maybe I, maybe I just listen to it in, in that, in, you know, in, in those lenses and in, in those codes. Maybe I need to give them a listen to like later, um, you know, coming up. Well, just my, my thing is, and it's my, it's completely my problem. Right. And mm-hmm. I don't say this is the artist's problem, but my thing is I, I'm not going to spend time listening to an artist's work where, mm-hmm. where either the production is not, something I'm into, the features are not something I'm into, or the lyrics are not, right? So like, it has, to, you have to have all three for me, right? If I'm gonna spend time, my, and right now I'm an adult, right? I'm a fucking, um, you know, I'm a working adult, even in this quarantine era, I work from home. I don't have all the time in the world to fucking listen to music. So when I do choose to put something in my, I never listen to the radio, I don't even let Spotify tell me what the fuck it was to, I'm choosing, to spend time with something because it has all three, right? Mm-hmm. The production uh, with hip hop, at least beats that inspire me lyrics that I pay attention to and either I'm inspired by or transformed to a different place and features that don't take me out of the artist's uh, vibe. You know what I mean? Sure. Basically I don't really fuck with a lot of commercial hits, right? I don't because especially as the years have gone on, there's some corny shit going on, you know, like I just, in my opinion, I don't fuck with factory me. And I'm not saying Busta did this. I'm not saying that, but I tend to, I drifted away when things like past the Cavarcier that when that album, when that song came out, I was like, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? But I see, like, and that's another example. Like I love I that know. song, but not for the same reasons that I love other Busta music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, right. you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a fun song. He's allowed it, to make some fun, fun it's songs. Fun. There's, there's some, there's some humor in it. Right. Uh, it's yeah. But it was it was a it was a song that was probably, uh, you know, designed in some part for 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 uh, it was a club hit. A lot of people. Yeah. Sure, sure. Right. And, I play that shit in my frat house like, nightly, like <laughs> five times nightly, bro. Like, you know. Yeah. Hey. And, that, and again, I, I completely recognize that's my problem. man. That's not the artist's problem. You know, it's my own trip that I like call it snobbiness, call it whatever you want. It's my own blocks and walls that I put up. But. I also, I, I stick by it because again, I have had too many experiences. Dude, do you remember? God bless Raekwon the Chef, right? One of the greatest rappers ever. An untouchable level, right? Sure. But he did a song, a feature on Justin Bieber, on a Justin Bieber track. Oh yeah, I remember that shit. I and like I it. <laughs> Yo, I died inside. I was like, oh my God. I felt like I just got punched in the stomach. You know what I mean? I'm like, See that that oh like you you brought it up. God. That's your thing. You take you take the shit personally. Just I like, do because I don't take I'm it. It's so important to me. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm with you. There, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. The first time I saw that Ray did a song with Justin Bieber, of course, my initial reaction was like, oh, seriously. And then I heard it. I'm like, all right, this is a cheesy song. It's is Bieber, but you know what? It's catchy. I kind of like it. Ray can bring makes it a little bit better than what it should be. I'm not gonna hate in this song. I actually kind of like it. That that's kind. But my initial reaction was that same thing. I was like, oh, seriously, really, Bieber? But it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. It just it felt like a sacrifice of his own morals. <laughs> like you can't call yourself 100 percent real anymore. <laughs> like yo. Anyway, I fucking love Ray Kwan. I, I'm sorry. Which by the way, that track. Back to anarchy, mm-hmm. the heist. Yes. <laughs> so the heist. Ghost, you want to talk Ray, about story Mark Marciano? Mm. Yo. <laughs> so uh, fucking good. It's always. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it, it's. All, I, I think uh, Ben. I think me and you. Like when we were talking about the anarchy weeks ago, that was one of the things we we're talking about. Uh, whenever I think of anarchy, the first two tracks immediately I think of are the heist and sure by the time. And isn't it crazy that there's a track with Jay-Z and DMX on this album that I don't even, when I just, when I don't have the album on, I can't even give you a quote from it. Like it just, it, yeah. to me, it's one of the more forgettable songs on the album. And, and truth be told, the album takes a taper at the end, right? It like does. that's why I don't hold it up with When Disaster Strikes or ELD. Yeah. Okay. So okay. that song Anarchy at the end is, I mean, it's not, I don't know. I don't know what it is and it's not, but the fact is it's been playing in the back of my mind for like 20 years, nonstop. Yeah. Low, really low. That, key. Like that, that like song's great. Turned down all the way, but yeah. it's on. It's yeah. always on. That song. <laughs> uh, what this world is coming to. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, I I do I do like that song. I got I got to be honest. Wait, the last <laughs> track, the Anarchy track. The an, the Anarchy actually. Well, I was I'm sorry. I'm I was going back to the the DMX Jay Z song. Oh, but the Anarchy yeah, I don't song love is, that. Is great. That actually is a really good beat. So um, that, you're you're right about that, Gary. I love that song. But I'm saying somewhere in the end of the album, I, I admittedly lose interest towards the end. Yeah, look here, yeah, yeah, but. And it, and it followed the trend of late 90s, early 2000s hip hop albums being a little too long, right? Like there's, yeah. an ex, there's a 20 minutes of fat on the album that could have been trimmed. Now, yeah. let me rephrase, 10 minutes. That could have, you know what I mean? A few yes. songs that could have been trimmed and, it would, and I would call this album five out of five, perfect score. Benny, I'm going to disagree with you and I'll tell okay. you why. I'll tell you Hit my- me with it. Hit me with it. Because if I agree with you, then we're never going to hear ELE 2. It's never going to be released, right? So I'm going to say that oh. every song in this album was fucking perfect. <laughs> you know, <laughs> on, on the outside I chance that the dragon, on the outside longer. chance that, that, that Buster Rhymes ever sees this, and I, I, mean, I have my doubts that that's ever going to happen. Dude, but the squad please is know I need you to release ELE2. When you announced it in 2014, I literally messed my pants. Yeah, dude, I'm still cleaning up shit from my pants. <laughs> After hearing some part, so like what I heard in that, in that, uh, in that mixtape, right? His preview of ELE2, right? Mm. Where he's, oh uh, where he's uh, yeah. Where he uh. uses, right? Uh, that, you know, it just, it was a glimpse of maybe that's the next chapter. That's the next evolution of what the dragon is gonna sound like more often right which would i be have a yeah incredible. go ahead go ahead. sorry man yeah i was just so impressed by the uh you know it was just it was a different way to use his voice it was uh it felt like it was very truthful it felt like he was very proud of uh of of, of putting out music in this style and, and how natural uh you know it it came to him uh i don't know i was very excited to hear more of that and, and i'm hearing a little bit of it sprinkled in here and there like a little yeah. hint you know, in like music that he participates in, that's not necessarily on his own album and, and like on the mixtapes. Right. And an album of that. Go. I'm sorry, Gary. I keep I'm interrupting done, you. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a dickhead. I do that all the time. So, so, and on that note, right, in the shit that he, right, he's released certain singles mm -hmm. over these last few years that like, I'm like, oh my God, it's coming. You know what I mean? Like, like that, what's the song? He just released a song called, ah, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and I was like, what the fuck? That song was fucking incredible. The, the track he did with Eminem. Uh, yeah. What was that? What was I that forgot what it's called. Calm Down. I, calm Down. Oh, calm Down, yeah. My. Calm Down. Dude, when I heard that, uh, that I started having like seizures of like, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. When he starts with that shit and just. Yo, only I'm telling you, he's the only artist that that <clears throat> that can Yo. like enter through here, go all around <laughs> my fucking brain, and just go. like he just I don't know how that else to Instagram put it besides shit. those physical gestures. That Instagram shit that Gary sent like three weeks yeah. ago, like, like even that that was like a little shitty forty second video, but like I'm yep. sitting on the toilet watching it's like oh my god, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> that feels Yo, incredible. D, have you seen the video of him? Gary, I know you've seen this. He's on uh, Big Boy's Neighborhood, hmm. and they and they 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 call it like karaoke or whatever. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They put out all his like just this fucking laundry list of, of his psychotically, hits, right? massively successful hits, and he's oh, just yeah. rapping. Like, and then at, and then he puts on Calm Down at the end, but he like he's gassed out. He can't finish it. But that, even even that like was like it's like all right whatever you're fine throw in the towel you're yo, good <laughs> you're good bro <laughs> you're <down>. good <laughs> incredible. Um, incredible but no just go, going back to the to the towards the end of the album you, okay. you're right and as much as you know as much as much as I, I I respect and used to love Lenny Kravitz you're ending yeah. the album with a fucking Lenny Kravitz song like and it's a misuse that, that's of Lenny Kravitz in my like, in my opinion it was that, that was in the era of like yo let's get this famous rock star on our song yeah. Right, yeah, like he exactly. had Ozzy, which was that was better. On a, yeah, that was actually pretty dope. That, that was, was dope. dope. That was dope. <laughs> but this Lenny one, I don't even like. What is it? His it's kind of like it's his guitar. Lame. But yeah. like, it's like you lame. know we're gonna move Not it. Even... You know we're gonna do like yeah. Mm. Like I, I love you, Buster. I love you, Lenny. But th th this ain't it, Chief. Yeah, look, they, they wanted to make a song. <laughs> this ain't, this ain't the song. thing. You, you got a song. Same thing, man. You got, you got a sandwich, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
the, uh, it's Scarface reference. Yeah. yeah. The, and, and, <laughs> I think that it's okay for him to release work that is imperfect. You know, I think that I accept that, you know, Buster Rhymes is an imperfect character. Sure. I don't know about the human, you know, Trump, myth, I think, uh, uh, but as a, as a character, what he says, imperfect, right? I don't have to idolize that. But like, in terms of releasing music, he's not somebody I, I'm, I'm like, you know, absolutely looking to, to create an album that I could listen to from the very beginning to the very end with equal enthusiasm. No, I just want him to put his artwork out there, man. The guy is an artist and totally. you know, he shouldn't wait for perfection. Like he's somebody, he's a rare individual that has been doing, uh, making art for decades and still has the, probably his best work ahead of him. You know, I think, like, I think so, man. Who I think, knows? Okay. Who knows? I don't. I, I think he sense, he's like going like for Cash. another ten years, man. Like, look, look at Johnny Cash. Look at the album Johnny Cash released. Uh, you know, I mean, quite recently before he before he passed yeah. away. Yeah, right? that's a great album. The one he, that perfect. Rick Rick Rubin produced it, right? I, I think know. so. I yeah, think so. it was great. You know, he sound like his voice. It was clearly Johnny Cash. I, I actually, dude, I think this is an apt comparison, right? He's clear. He was clearly Johnny Cash, recognizably Johnny Cash. Right, you could recognize him if you speed up his words and make him sound like Alan and Chipmunk, still Johnny Cash. Right, right. Uh, his cadence was the same, whatever, recognizable. But his, it was just, it was a different sound. It was maybe a little slower, but it was also fucking darker and like introspective, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Is and that like, the album where he did the cover for um for Hurt? Yeah, the, the Nine yes. Nails cover. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <Case in> point. <laughs> like I would, I would, shit. I would take. <laughs> Any any anything that Buster Rhymes puts out that's a yeah. cohesive, you know idea from him, I would just fucking listen to it a hundred times. Um, I'm so excited for whatever he releases next. I just hope you yeah. get. Me too, man. And and judging by, again, judging by like right the the Q-tip mixtape, right? What's it called? The uh, the, uh, the abstract and the dragon. Abstract and the, the dragon. Cool. The return of the dragon. No, that was just him. That was just Buster. The sequel was just Buster. I mean, oh, there was, there was Q tips yeah, sprinkled in yeah, for yeah. talk tracks and stuff. Right. Like, funny, but yeah, no. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Those do it, I think. those mixtapes were. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Yo, I, I could. There's mixtapes in the world that I find very forgettable, but those are not. Those are a lot of love was put into that, and yo, he has to track with Doom on Return of the Dragon. Are you kidding me? Buster Rhymes and MF Doom are on this. I know they were probably in different countries when they recorded it, but I mean, whatever. I'll take what I can get at this. It was incredible. <laughs> Uh, you know, when, so those albums, th those mixtapes were, I, I think to me, as good as albums. I listened to those over oh, and yeah. over, totally. over, over and over, and over especially and over. the first one, right? Where Busta Rhymes raps on, uh, on, uh, gosh, what was that? La, what was that song? la, la, la. Yeah, yeah, the God lived through. God lived through. Yeah, that's right. The tribe, the yeah. tribe track. Yep. I always wanted to rhyme on this shit. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, you, you almost get the feel like that. You're, Gary, I want to stop on that for a second because that that every time I hear that, you you almost feel like the you see like the inner kid in Buster. Like yeah. you could tell like that's something that's probably a thought he's had like since back then. He probably like, who, who knows why, why he why he never did if he was too shy. The record label never got it or whatever. But his, just him saying that like I always wanted to rhyme over that. You could tell that was fucking genuine. Like he was Yo, like, his, very honest. For oh, sure, so man. It's really cool. And, and get to your point about uh, about speech and about like how you know his character really is and might more might be in real life. The closest thing we get is really, you know, or at least from from what I consume on, you know, out of out of mm -hmm. like the internet and the media is uh, I follow his Instagram, right? And it's this, the stuff that he tends to repost. I mean, a lot of it, and the way that he responds to people's comments is uh, is super positive. You know, yeah. he will uh, he will salute, uh, you know, the various people that he respects and 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 uh, and show them great respect with the language that he chooses. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very generous with that. It's cool. Everything's positivity and, with him. That's that's the yeah. other great thing about him in general. That's, so and just, that's you know. yeah, that this era of Buster Rhymes, right? The two thousand tens era, let's call it. I don't yeah. know what else to call it. He's been showing so much love and appreciation yep. to like Q tip, Fife Dog, the Native Tongues movement, um he, you know, DJs that that helped him out in, you know, with beats in the past and like he's on this reflective mm -hmm. anytime I hear him talk, he's talking about the love he fucking mm -hmm. has there's what was the i sh i sent you the, I, guys the link there he was there was this documentary about the evolution of hip-hop on netflix oh yeah it's a, it's a doc series and he and they, t they were on the native tongues episode yeah, and, and he's like yeah. you guys ain't never made me 
a fucking native tongue and he was like point you know what i mean but you yeah, can totally. <laughs> you can tell the love that he had for those people how they put him on man yeah. who knows what the world would be like had what's the scenario had a different anchor at the end besides mm. the fucking could you brand. imagine my god you know, I feel that's beautiful coming from him, I think, because he makes himself to be such an outsized character mm-hmm. in, his, in his music and the way that he talks, you know, about himself, right? He's just like, I am the, you know, I'm, I'm great, right? Uh, I am, you know, even with his humility. Physical... Somehow he says he's great yeah. with humility. I, yeah. I don't know how you, that's he, literally the humble magnificent, right? But there. the man yeah. talking about, he's talking <laughs> up, you know, sucker MCs and like, this is the guy who like is, uh, you know, it's I'm split on this, right? Because like on one hand, I think then like you know whatever in the early 2000s, then he like there was like some some newspaper uh, thing I saw where he like got pulled over and had like a giant machete under his seat, and he's like, yeah, it was a cultural gift from a friend, you know, because uh, you know the, the the people that would slice coconuts, you know, where I you know where where, where I'm from yeah. or where I grew up or something, right? You don't mess with the guy who's slicing coconuts because he's got a machete. It's the guy who don't get robbed. <laughs> like I, I love that, right? But also like this is a this guy's a dangerous man. This is a bad dude, right? Hey, you put a machete in anyone's hand, they become dangerous. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Like, I just, I wonder, right, if, because uh, he shows great respect, right? With all of that, with all of that pride that he carries, he shows such humility to certain people and he, and he kind of bows down. It's all, that, all the more meaningful. Yeah. But like, I can't help but think, man, Buster Rhymes would probably hate me. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh, I, think, I don't think you would. Actually. He's actually one of the celebrities that I imagine, like, if I ever had the opportunity to tell him how impactful he's been in my life. Yo, like, we have code words, which will not be mentioned. Yeah. yeah on, no. Hell no. <laughs> are completely 100% inspired by Busta Rhymes. Our lives have been shaped by this man. Literally. Yeah. Our, like I our, if you would be surprised to hear that. I wonder if you would be surprised that there were some, you know, like, like middle class junior high school kids in in Brooklyn <laughs> listening to his music and like it like shaping their lives for the Literally. next fucking thirty years. Like, can he? You know, would, would he? Would he have thought that that's the case? Because that's crazy. I'm sure he knows. I don't. Not maybe not about like the 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 the, the Jewish Russian boys, <laughs> but like I, I, I maybe I'm I don't not, know. I'm sure he does though because like there's a, there's a certain bonding to like whatever be black, white, Chinese, whatever. If you're a fan of hip hop, especially like New York, like that era of hip hop, like it, it, at at this point, especially it it does not matter. I'm sure he 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 wouldn't be surprised. Like the whole Brooklyn connection is all he really gives a shit about, you know? Yeah. Uh, listen, man. Uh, I think he knows. I think Swift I really Star do. still lives in his neighborhood, by the way. <laughs> really? I think he does. He did when I when, when we were in high school. I told you, I I walked past the. Uh, I was crossing Coney Island Avenue, walking to my house from like the train, like one day after after school, and uh, I had heard that he lived in the neighborhood. And uh, at the the red light at Coney Island Avenue, I look up and this fucking Swift Star driving the SUV with someone in the passenger. I'm like, oh shit, what up, Swift? <laughs> I, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we really got far away from anarchy. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, we, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we brought it anger. back. No, right. because it, it is a nuanced conversation because we chose Anarchy. Because it is an album that right. is recognizably, you know, some would say imperfect. I would say imperfect from like a right. listen straight through perspective, but it's part right. of the evolution of this of this guy, right? It's yeah. a necessary step. And one thing I want to point out, Busta also has this, with every one of his albums, tell me if, the, if you can relate. Yep. I don't, maybe it's just me. Whenever I listen to Anarchy, I see red. Yeah. Whenever I listen to When Disaster Strikes, blue. I see a bluish, blue. Oh, like a dark yeah. blue. Whenever I listen to ELE, I think about Orange. the cover. The, yeah, like just the fire explosions, just, yeah. right? That is a man who has like hit, hit it's so, I believe it's his man. covers, blue. at yeah. least up until Genesis. Genesis, the cover was just him. With like mechanical arms or something, I think, or I don't. It know. was like him, like like sad, yeah, like yeah, yeah. and it had the, the block, the yellow block lettering, yeah. Buster yeah. Rhymes. Yeah, yeah. But like those albums have a color, like I I listen to them in the color of the cover of the fucking yep. album. That's how impactful it was <laughs> to my to my like growth. As I know a human exactly being. what you're talking about. It's what what you're saying sounds fucking weird, but I know exactly what you're talking about, and I agree. Midnight Marauders, I think green. Like I just think. Yeah about the disc with all everyone's faces on it but like everything is right. green when i listen to it 
I don't know, man. Very few artists have that that hold on me where I where I listen in colors. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, that guy, I, man. yeah. <laughs> And I, and I woo anything yellow, basically. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary, you can't relate? No, I never realized that. I, oh. I, I could totally relate. That's yeah. absolutely true. I never thought yeah. of it. Any. Wow. He's, he's the, yo, in many ways, he's the GOAT, honestly. At it, in many categories, he's the GOAT. Sure. Right? Sure. Uh, I don't know of anyone who does what he does on any type of level close to his, right? Is he the most metaphorical, lyrically deep person? No, but his approach to music, especially when he's inspired. And that's what I would say these first four albums have. He is a truly inspired human being on these albums. Again, I can't talk about the other ones because I didn't give him nearly as much love and attention, but these albums, when he is inspired, he reaches through the speakers and grabs you by the fucking jugular and just shakes you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one is capable of that in hip hop, in my opinion. Right? Like I think about maybe MOP on certain tracks. I, I like feel like, like, you know, Annie up or, or the track Actually, they did with Gangstar on uh, I part with that real quick for M MOP. And what, that was the one thing I was going to sort of finish up with this is that, and, and not, not to pile on to the end of this album, but he does a song with MLP on this album, yeah. Ready for War. And yeah. I do like it, but it's very not MLP. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's Art not exactly all. the MLP guest appearance I was expecting. Yeah. And they're still yelling into the mic. I, not, I was already, not, yeah, I was already you know? listening. You know the song Friends Friends versus Business, I think it's called, on a, no, on a Gangstar album, uh, Moment of Truth. Hmm. It's MLP on that. I was expecting something as, as, you know, stomp the ground, like impactful as that. But uh, what, what can I say? Uh, that it wasn't, again, the end of the album, that's why I don't hold it in as high regard as the other four, the other three on that list, because it just kind of tapers, right? It tapers, but it impact is Yeah. Yeah. It ends with the song Anarchy, which, as we all agree, I think it's like if, if I feel like yeah. if it ended on the MLP or the Lenny Kravitz track and then the outro, I'm like, eh, okay, that was lackluster. But I, I see what he did. Like, he, like, he, like most, most of the album's good, kind of like had, had some filler, probably some studio songs that he had to get in there with the guest speakers or whatever, and then our uh, guest artists then round it up with, with Anarchy. So, yeah, I, I, I ultimately think either way, like, no matter what, I'm not letting those tracks take away from the album. It's not like they're bad tracks, they, right. they just don't compare it to the ones that are in the first half of the album. But I, I get like, I still, I do, the, the BMX Jay-Z song is still, like, it's still listenable, like, more than listenable. The MLP yeah, track not, is still good. They're, they're yo, good. They're, they're bad. I would never call those songs bad, even, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. that they didn't hit me, in, like, right? Like, the way the beginning of the album, the first 70% of the album, right? Like, up to, I'd say, like, up to, what's the song after the heist? Uh, trip Out of Town. Trip Out of Town. I'd say, like, yeah. up to Trip Out of Town, we're talking God level. You know what I mean? Not one bad track. And fuck, that's where the album should have ended, especially with the ending of that song, where, the, mm. where it turned Cut. out just a fucking movie. Yeah. That should have been it. That should have been it. Like, oh, my God. Dude, it, he, it would have been... Oh, that that would have made it a 13, 14-track song or album. It would have been perfect. That, he, that's a writing... That's a storytelling, like, masterwork, right? <laughs> You're listening to this caper, this fucking crime saga, and then at the end, Cut! Nice work, fellas. You know what yeah, I mean? Good, like, good acting, motherfuckers. Good acting. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, that's up there with Rewind, with I Got a Story to Tell, with, like, what was it? Uh, I guess, Children's Story, like this. Yeah. That, it's, and, and the height. That, that's why I say, like, back to back. It's just so funny. Those are back to back tracks. Because both yeah. of them are such vivid, like, vivid stories. I got that. They do a good job of, uh, oh, you know. Yeah. That's so funny. You know, it, you know, when you're thinking about, when you're talking about GOAT, right? When you're talking about the GOAT, uh, to me, that's not Busta Rhymes, even though Busta Rhymes might be my favorite fucking musician. Like, uh, hey, honestly, might be my, my favorite rapper is not the GOAT either for me. Yeah. My favorite is MF Doom. I wouldn't consider him the greatest of all time. When I think of the GOAT, I think of, I think of Notorious B.I.G., right? I think of this, is a, this, this person was making music uh, in, his, in its best. Like, I, I think I'm not, I wasn't even excited to see the evolution. I mean, I, I wish he lived and I did get to, we, we did get to listen to the evolution of, the, of that artist, right? But like in that form, when he stopped making music and he died, like that was perfect. 
right? Mm-hmm. That was fucking perfection. Two, two perfect albums. I right. Wish he had a, if he had a couple more, it's the only reason I can't put him in the, yeah, in the exa- go. Exactly. It, it, Me too. Me you're too. right. He has two perfect albums. But they were just you know, the the form of his music. I think was as good as it's gonna like as good as it could possibly be, in my opinion, as a fucking music appreciator. Right? With mm-hmm. Bustin' Rhymes, I feel like he he has yet to to do that. Right? And uh, oh, he's I don't know, man. Amazing things, but I think his best music, I really do think, is still uh, in front of him. I think that whatever you might, his form is gonna go be, is gonna be the fucking shit. Mm-hmm. Dude, you might be right that his best is yet to come. I I think he has like just watching him on that karaoke shit on you know big boys neighborhood i believe he's capable of still making his best project ever but what i will say is i believe when disaster strikes and ele were that pinnacle level of of product like i don't like put those albums up against all of my favorite albums ever and it stands tall across genres of music like right like uh, you guys know I hold Steely Dan albums on the same level I hold Midnight Marauders and 36 Chambers Mm -hmm. and Liquid Swords. And I hold those albums in there with the best albums ever made by any fucking musician ever. Those two albums. You know what I mean? So I do believe he's reached, he was at that in the same, and I hold those in the same regard as I do Ready to Die, Life After Death. They're masterpieces, really. Um, and one thing I, real quick about this album is I noticed is on ELE, you fast rap, fast rap Busta was kind of introduced to the world. Mm-hmm. I, maybe he was double timing it on other projects, but give me some more. And the, the track with Mystical, yeah. right? Machine Gun Chopper Busta was introduced, and his syllable, um, his syllable attack on this on. Anarchy, I think, carried a lot of that. You know, he uses the N-word to link a lot of words together in, mm-hmm. in a, you know what I mean? But it, its use is, like, artistic. Because yeah, it's, it's almost like a <laughs> joint. He uses that word so much on this album. But it's almost like a joint in, like, in an arm or, like, in your fingers. Like, it's just a, mm-hmm. connect, a connective piece yeah, to achieve right. athletic, articulate, acrobatic syllable wordplay right again sure. he's never gonna be on my list for greatest lyricist of all time he just won't but greatest flow of all time oh, greatest uh, complex uh verbiage and and patterns and delivery he connects words effortlessly effortlessly mm-hmm. while being so forceful it's almost like effortlessly forceful you know what i mean it's like, brah, but it's like, he's not even trying. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. I fucking love this album. Because he wasn't, you know, he was doing it before, but I'd say like, this is like, he achieved, especially on the first, uh, what, I got to look at the track list now. But, uh, which, which one I got? Look. Call, calling all that. What's that? What's the name? Oh, of oh, um, yeah, Here we, we got a job for y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, ah, shit. We put it down uh, for y'all. Is that what it is? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. That's what it is. Uh, fuck, I love, I love that. And oh. getting back to that specific, that that like, the specific car. Talking about Dodge Durango's. Who the fuck raps about Dodge Durango's? <laughs> <laughs> right, like you can totally picture everything that he's saying. Uh, or at least for, for me, it's a, it's a it's a movie that's playing in my head as I'm listening to this. Stuff. Yeah, he's a painter. He's a good storyteller. Paints a picture, man. The beat. Very. The beat. By the way. Yeah, I don't know if this is the song I was thinking about that, but I don't know. He gets super articulate, and no, there's a lot of fast rappers. If you listen to someone like Twista, who I, I don't love Twista, but like you could tell he's rapping very fast, but I don't really know what the fuck he's saying. Yeah, yeah exactly. you know what I mean. You listen to Busta Rhymes go real quick, and I'm like, I understand. I uh, like I read mm-hmm. you loud and clear, Busta Rhymes. I read mm-hmm. you loud and clear. You know what I mean? And I think that's the important shit to him, right? It's not so much what he, uh, he's not trying to write a, write an essay, right? But he, uh, uh, I think it's, it's a tool that he uses, right? The wordplay is just a tool in the toolbox for him to create really interesting flow over, over music. Uh, he cares sometimes, but sometimes it's just like, this is the means to an end. I'm going to use it. Mm. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, he could be talking about anything, right? Like, you know, our friend, we had a, we had a, you know, I'm thinking back to, to our, our buddy Rashid, right? Oh who, who, who showed that a smart person who loves hip hop can make music uh, about anything and it could be awesome. Right. And like, I mean, it's in a sense that's, uh, you know, Busta Rhymes is making a choice to rap, you know, and use, use the, use the, you know, verbiage that he uses, use, use the, uh, but he could be, he could be doing, he could be using anything. It could be anything. Right, he just happened to choose that. Hmm. I don't think it's important to him. No, I, I hear you. Do you think Rashid is was instrumental in your love of Busta Rhymes? Because he loved Busta Rhymes. Yeah, I, 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 like, yeah. I mean, someday, you know, I'm gonna have time, and I'm gonna do like ten years of therapy about this and figure it out, right? But Rashid, so uh, was a guy, was was a kid that uh, accepted me, and he was a mean fucking kid to some kids, but he accepted me. <laughs> because I had some fucking goofy red sneakers on and I lived in the projects. And he's like, you know, this kid must be all right. Cause he's got <laughs> red Nikes and you know, yeah. but I'm not going to call him Ronald McDonald and I'll beat up any kids I do. That was really, that was really nice of him. It was touching. Mm-hmm. It was touching to be accepted by somebody, uh, you know, who was not very accepting. So <laughs> he, he, it, yo, it makes me feel special too, man. Like, like I'm not, I don't know what the fuck he saw in me. I was a little dipshit. Like a, I, was like, insane. I, was like a, I was a dickhead in, in, in junior high school, but man, like. I think it was the love of hip hop, man. I think that's what brought us all together. I think that's, I think that's the sole reason why uh, like he actually yeah. had re- re- respect for us. Like he was, he, we were genuinely friends. It wasn't yeah. just like a, like all of us. Like, you know, it, was, right. it wasn't just like, oh, let's just like listen to, you know, something every week or whatever. Like we were hanging out, you know, all, all our breaks and everything like that. I, th- I really think it was like going back to, again, coming back to artists like Busta and everything like that. Like it's things, people like this, like music was, was, was keeping us together. Getting back to this shit, right? I don't want to, we could drag on. I could literally talk, talk about Bust, Buster Rhymes all day. He's, but this album does not get enough love. It's not held in high enough regard in the ethos of uh, hip hop history. It is fucking awesome. And he's the king, man. You know what I mean? Undoubtedly. What we're hearing right now is the outro, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just easily the top five in the top five dead or alive greatest greatest of all time right i'm not gonna put i i it w- i would be lying if i said he was my number one but fuck to say if he's number six he's in the top five man you know yeah, what i mean uh, like and i've i've had the pleasure of seeing him live with each of you guys which was great that's right the, the rock, Gary, rock yeah. the bells yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was me, me and Gary and, and Eric Abadu and Buster Ryan a couple of years ago. But then, yeah, me and you saw him. Gary, yeah, yeah, I know you know about this, but uh, Try Call Quest went five or so live doing uh, Midnight Marauders on stage. Three songs in, Buster Rhymes come out, sorry, comes out to do scenario with them and stays for the entire rest of the show as their fucking hype man. It so was probably good. the greatest concert I've ever seen. It, 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 it might have been the greatest show I've, I've ever seen. Um, my only complaint about that night was the sound the sound was a little rough I'm such a dick I'm sorry Dion yeah no Busta Rhymes music especially around this time was just fucking formative man it taught me about nuance right it taught me you know from a time when I was a kid and I idolized his music to the time when I knew enough to know that there's nuance and not everything is perfect that's when this was coming out man it helped shape our crew our our close group of friends who's uh, Mm a a weird fucking crew that's running the world now you know and it's uh it's fucking cool this is a this was a part uh, a big part of uh you know just just a very meaningful album to me uh personally for all its fucking imperfections it had it has brilliance in it it's cool yeah, for sure yeah, beautifully said yeah yeah yo hope you enjoyed that bonus episode of do-it-yourself music appreciation as I mentioned in the intro, that was from our second crack at trying to record a podcast. So the quality was a little rough around the edges, but we think we got it to some good shit. Um, I was able to insert some music into this episode like I have been doing from our, our boy Red Walrus. 
Um, as usual, you could download his stuff from Bandcamp. Uh, excellent DJ. Provides all the music for the podcast. So thanks again, Red Walrus. Uh, download his stuff. Next uh, episode is going to be Zarface. The album Every Hero Needs a Villain. So check that out when you get a chance. And uh, we'll see you next time.